We're back it's Thursday evening and welcome back to Weather for Weather Geeks. This is the most detailed weather forecast video you're going to find for Eastern Ohio and Western Pennsylvania. We have a stormy Saturday in our forecast, but really that's the only kind of rough day we have coming up with a lot of dry weather in store for the next several days before the pattern turns a little more active again it looks like in the run up to the 4th of July next week. But I like showing this graphic at this time of the year showing a reduction in the dew points and a fairly dramatic one, a very noticeable one at least. We have dew points in the middle 60s at this time on Wednesday evening. But on this Thursday evening, the dew points have backed off into the lower 50s. It is beautiful outside just before sunset this evening and we'll be in great shape overnight with the weather. I'll leave the windows open for tonight. In the meantime, it is Thursday, so uh, this time of year would pay particular attention to every Thursday's issuance of the drought monitor, the U.S. drought monitor. Now, this product is can be a little bit deceptive sometimes from week to week because it's issued on Thursday, but it's finalized on Monday or Tuesday of that week. So this is data that does not take into account yesterday's rain, and it shows an expansion of not only the abnormally dry conditions, but the moderate drought conditions in the state of Ohio and parts of Pennsylvania as well. In Ohio specifically, about 21% of the state is now in a moderate drought. The highest concentration on that map I just showed you was across northern Ohio and central and western Ohio. We're not quite as dry in far northeast Ohio and into western PA, but we're getting there for sure. Yesterday's rains certainly helped. Some of us had an inch or so worth of rain on Wednesday, but uh, we could certainly use some more. But outside of Saturday, not much coming our way over the next four or five days. In the meantime, just after we recorded Weather Geeks last evening, uh, the line of storms that impacted the Mahoning and Shenango Valleys kept on trucking, of course, into western PA, and it actually dropped at least a couple of tornadoes around the greater Pittsburgh area. The storm survey teams from the National Weather Service office in Pittsburgh uh, did complete at least a couple of surveys today and found EF1 damage in western parts of Allegheny County, just west of downtown Pittsburgh. Uh, and then to the east of downtown Pittsburgh, uh, this was a low end, but still an EF2 uh, tornado, uh, the state of Pennsylvania's first EF2 or higher uh, tornado so far in 2024. So uh, tornado, uh, or tornadic activity, I should say, uh, fairly common. And I suspect there may be a couple more when the storm surveys are completely done in western PA. So yeah, it was, it was common for little spin-ups to occur along that line. Thankfully not in our television viewing area, but not far to our south and east. Now in terms of breaking down the number of tornado warnings that have occurred or been issued this year by National Weather Service Office, it is interesting looking at this map. It's been kind of a strange year. 28 is the number uh, in Pittsburgh, or issued by the Pittsburgh Weather Service Office. Check out Central Alabama, the Birmingham office, has only issued five tornado warnings. That's one of the tornado hotbeds of the country, especially in recent years. But they've only had five tornado warnings issued by that Weather Service office. And, you know, there's a few other, you know, hotspots such as Memphis, uh, places that tend to see a lot of tornadoes in the spring and early summer that just have not seen that many, where we've seen a whole slew of tornadoes from the Plain States up into parts of the Corn Belt and into the Ohio Valley as well. The Cleveland Weather Service Office has issued 22 tornado warnings so far in 2024. The severe weather threat this evening is mostly focused on the High Plain States from the Dakotas on southward towards the panhandles of Oklahoma and Texas, but that's the system that heads our way at the start of the upcoming weekend. So tomorrow morning, uh, this could be our you know coolest morning in some time in some places, and we might have another morning like this early next week, where I think some places in the cooler sheltered valleys might start the day with a number, uh, a temperature number that starts with four, a 48, 49 degree reading. Certainly not out of the realm of possibility as we kick off our Friday, but wow, what a nice afternoon we have coming up. Uh, the humidity is a non-story for one more day tomorrow, and it's gonna be warmer in the afternoon compared to today, I think. We'll touch 84, 85 before the day is through in most spots. So while today was cooler than average, certainly for the 27th day of June, it'll be much more typical of midsummer as we go into our Friday. All right, the day three severe weather outlook uh, put out by the Storm Prediction Center today. This of course would be Saturday into Saturday night. Uh, level two out of our one to five scale in the yellow area. This includes a fair amount of Ohio and Western PA. My suspicion is when this becomes the day two outlook, overnight tonight, they will expand the slight risk to catch more of kind of central PA. They might trim a little bit off this northern edge, but I doubt it's much. My, my experience with these severe weather outlooks is they expand them a lot more than they contract them. So I suspect you're going to see more yellow when this becomes day two out in this area. 
and they might leave a lot of this alone, but the more I look at this and, and with our afternoon model runs, the less impressed I am with a big severe weather day uh, in interior Ohio, especially, I think we just have too many clouds. There's gonna be a lot of wind shear on Saturday. In other words, changing of the wind direction and speed with height through the atmosphere. But the instability is the key on Saturday. We might have a hard time getting storms up on their feet in the afternoon uh, with the clouds around. I think there'll be some storms, certainly. There's enough wind shear to ensure that at least there'll be a scattering of thunderstorms. But thunderstorms that have enough uh, going for them to produce high-end wind damage and perhaps isolated tornadoes, I think that's pretty questionable in a lot of Ohio. Maybe somewhat more favorable the farther east you go into Pennsylvania. So again, future cast on Friday, not much to show you, but our warm front lifts in. The dew points rise Friday night into Saturday morning. Now, you know, I get a lot of questions at this time of the year about you know, the weekend, especially Saturdays, a lot of things going on at this time of the year, graduation parties and weddings and everything like that. And the bottom line for Saturday is it can rain at any point. It's not going to rain all day. There's going to be some dry intervals. But at any point, might there be a passing shower or even a thunderstorm? Yes. There might be two distinct uh, kind of maximas here in our chances of precipitation. One may be around mid-morning with a scattering of showers and perhaps some thunder mid-morning. There might be a bit of a lull around midday, but the shorter the lull is, the lower the severe weather chances, I think, in the afternoon. If we don't have time for the atmosphere to recover and the sun to try to come out, that's going to limit the atmosphere's ability to produce a lot of severe weather, I think. And so that would be that would be a good thing. Now, the rain, if you have outdoor plans, is not a good thing, but the lack of severe weather would certainly be good news for most of us, um, unless you're a storm chaser and you know, you're not rooting for storm damage or anything like that, but you're rooting for some cool thunderstorms to chase and photograph. But I think it's pretty questionable on Saturday. Either way, our second maximum <clears throat> in terms of hourly rain chances, maybe late in the afternoon, <clears throat> pardon me, and early in the evening on Saturday. So maybe somewhere between say 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. is when we might kind of maximize those rain chances. And then from west to east, I would expect rain chances to decrease pretty rapidly as we get closer to sunset, seven, eight, nine o'clock Saturday evening. And then we're in great shape for Sunday. And in the wake of the front, the dew points will start out kind of elevated Sunday morning, and then they will lower as we go through the rest of the day. Now, next week is the 4th of July, a week from today, in fact. On the 4th, we do have a small chance of rain in our current forecast. What's gonna happen next week is we're gonna have a couple of really nice days. Monday and Tuesday, and then kind of the same sequence of events happens again. Warm front lifts in, the dew points come up, rain chances may come up for a time Wednesday into Wednesday night, and then on the 4th on Thursday, you know, a week out, we can't say with any degree of certainty, but there's a chance that the front that rolls through, the cold front that rolls through and produces probably some showers and storms on Wednesday may hang up not far to our south. It won't be, in other words, it won't be a clean sweep like we're expecting this weekend. If that's the premise, we might have to allow for showers and storms on the 4th itself. If that front is more of a clean sweep, kind of like yep, last night's front and the front over the weekend, then the 4th might turn out to be a pretty nice day. For now, we're going to keep a low-end chance of a shower or a storm in our forecast for the 4th of July. And of course, we'll continue fine-tuning that forecast as we get a little bit closer to the holiday. In the meantime, coming up Friday evening on Weather for Weather Geeks, we'll talk about those severe weather chances on Saturday in a lot more detail as we get more model information. We'll take another look at next week's forecast and the longer range as well. Hope you'll uh, tune in then, if you will. I'll see you on Friday. Have a great rest of your Thursday night.